Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to our online experience. My name is Muta. I am the lead pastor at Relevant Church. And at Relevant, we want to do one thing, one thing well. We want to help everybody around us discover that Jesus is relevant. And because Jesus is relevant, we want to create an atmosphere where we learn to passionately follow Jesus, love across boundaries, and make a tangible difference in our community, region, and world. And if this is your first time experiencing Relevant Church, even online, we'd love to see say welcome home. Do me a favor, uh, at the bottom of this video, there is an opportunity for you to click our connection card, a digital connection card. Let us know that you were here. Uh, we want to celebrate you. We want to thank you for being part of our online experience. Now, uh, we always start off with giving honor to where honors do. And so what I want to do today is give honor to everybody who is online, who is watching, or if you're just listening to the audio, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Uh, I believe that God has something that he wants to share with us uh, through this word. And it doesn't matter what's going on in the world. Uh, we may close the church doors, but we never stop having church. So uh, I'm going to pray actually before we get started. And um, if you'll just join me, God, thank you so much for this opportunity just to engage your word in this digital way. God, I pray that you may speak to us, draw us into your presence. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. So now let me tell you, uh, times like these are uh, interesting times for me personally. Uh, what's going on in our community, our region, our world is, is pretty tough. I'm gonna tell you why, because I am a super hypochondriac. Uh, I have this inordinate fear of getting sick and it's been happening all over time and year after year, uh, whenever there's a sort of epidemic or a really uh, a crazy disease that pops up, I always think I have it. Now listen, I'm not making light of this situation. I'm just saying this is me. So times like these are super, super scary for me. I remember uh, there was the SARS epidemic not so long ago, and I went to the doctor so many times in one year, my doctor essentially told me, do not return unless you are on your deathbed and because I'm I'm easily afraid when it comes to getting sick for whatever reason. I don't know what happened to me as a kid, but I'm always deathly afraid of being sick. And times like these uh, are really uh, fearful times for many people. Uh, there's individuals who are in populations that are susceptible uh, to, uh, to, to, to getting a, a virus. And so it, it's understandable that um, these are fearful times for uh, many individuals and also times Times like these are they bring out the worst in people as well too I was watching this video online where there's a, a few ladies in a grocery store and they got into an all-out brawl over toilet paper and I think times like these are the ones where God is really calling his church uh, to step in and provide peace in the middle of chaos. In fact, uh, A.W. Tozer, one of my favorite uh, writers and, and pastors and leaders, uh, shared this statement. He says, a scared world needs a fearless church. And Relevant Church, I want to declare today that we are a fearless church. We are going to be fearless. Uh, no matter what is taking place in this world, we know that our God is still on the throne and we are going to know that uh, we stand protected, uh, we stand in his shadow, and so we will be fearless. And 2 Timothy 1.7 really tells us this. It says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love, a spirit of power. And this is the most important piece, I feel like, a spirit of sound mind. And, you know, that is one of the reasons why we're meeting online today is because we want to make good decisions. We want to uh, serve our community well. We want to love on our community well. Uh, and we want to draw uh, into what God has for his community uh, by creating a space here where we're, we're making decisions, not based off of um, a desire to prove a point, but really saying, uh, how can we love on our community? How can we come alongside of them? And so that's why we decided uh, 
to uh, have this online experience. I know a few people have asked me, he says, well, if you're a fearless church, why are you uh, buckling in fear? And what I'm saying is uh, we don't want to be uh, uh, fearless. I mean, we are fearless, but we don't want to be foolish. Um, and I think in, uh, in what's going on, the best way for us to care for our community, the best way to care for you, um, the best way to care for our families is to, one, honor um, the leaders of the government who've, who've asked uh, groups to uh, not meet and gather, but also be able to uh, protect our family, our extended family and friends who may be susceptible. And we don't know what happens when we gather with the people who are sitting there. And so we're not just trying to be fearful. We just, uh, we're, we're, we're trying not to be foolish. We want to be good, wise stewards of what uh, God has called us to steward, his church. And so I believe that um, there is a text in scripture that really points to what fearlessness looks like. And in a time where God is calling us to be a fearless church, I want to share three attributes of the fearless. I believe in Psalm 91, we get a great picture in the first few verses of what it is to be fearless, how to stand fearless. Psalm 91 is a psalm of, of trust and it's a psalm of confidence. Uh, the writer of this psalm is really exemplifying what it means to, to really trust in God and, and, and put our, our devotion into Him, truly fear Him and give Him honor uh, for how good He is and, and His protection and His guidance. In fact, this psalm has also been called uh, a soldier psalm because it's a psalm uh, that emphasizes God's protection in crisis. And it's essentially written in three parts. The first part is someone declaring God's uh, 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 faithfulness and his trust in God. Uh, the second part is a group responding, um, describing God's protection and care. And then number three, uh, it's God finally speaking uh, about the faithful person and sharing how the faithful person will stand uh, protected. And so uh, today I just want to share four verses, the first four verses in Psalm 91 uh, that I believe that we can draw out what it means to be fearless, how we can be fearless, and how we can tackle whatever is going on in our world in a fearless way. So verse one opens up like this. It says, he who dwells in the shelter of the most high will abide in the shadow of the almighty. And it's talking about this dwelling place. Uh, it's the shelter, it's, it's this covering, it's, it's this hiding place. And it reminds me a whole lot of what Jesus said in uh, Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. He goes, uh, come to me who are weak and are heavy laden and I'll give you rest. He says, listen, if you're stressed, if you're fearful, if you're tired, come to me um, and I'll give you rest. I'll give you shelter. I'll give you a place to be and dwell in. And he says this, he says, take my yoke upon you because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And, and when you look at the word yoke, it actually means teaching. He says, listen, take my teaching as a covering. Uh, my covering will protect you. It's, it's light. It's not burdensome. My words will provide perfect shelter for you as well, too. And it reminds me of kids making forts in the trees. I don't know if it was if you ever did this when you were young. You you build a fort and you go up and, and, and you play army games and, and play all types of games. But it was that place where you went to. It was that retreat space where you and your buddies uh, go to. And this person who's writing this, he says, who dwells in the shelter of the Most High. He's like, I I'm making God's, God, God's presence, God's word, my dwelling place. That's my retreat place. And, and it's, it's interesting because this psalm uses so many words of God. It used, the first one is uh, El Elyon, talking about God being the most high. God being standing taller than everything and everyone else. And the text goes on to say, talking about being in the shadow of the Almighty. He says, he, this person will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Again, it's talking about a covering, and it shows close proximity. This individual is saying, in order for me to dwell with God, I've got to be in close proximity to Him as well, too. It goes on in verse 2. It says, I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. 
this is awesome. He says, I will say. He's making a personal declaration. He, he's making a personal declaration to the Lord. He says, I will say to the Lord. He's saying to Yahweh. Uh, this name Yahweh is the word, uh, is the name God used for himself when he was meeting with Moses. He says, listen, I'm Yahweh. I, I am, this is, I'm a personal God. And, and this individual is saying, listen, I, I will say to my personal God, the God who is with me, the God who cares about my every needs, the God who is close to me. He says, I will say to my, uh, to, to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress. He says, you're my shelter. Uh, you're my home base. You're where I find relief. You're my fortress. You're, you're my stronghold. You're a place of security, strength, and purpose for me. And, and he says, my God, I will trust. My God. Not fear is my, not my God. Worry is not my God. Sickness is not my God. Media is not my God. But the God of heaven and earth, the Lord Yahweh, you are my God. He says, in you will I trust. In whom I trust. He's planting his flag. He's chosen his side. He says, listen, I'm going to trust God over everything else. I'm going to trust God over fear. I'm going to trust God over uh, what the media says. I'm going to trust God. I'm not going to discredit what the media says. But what I'm going to say is I am going to lean and I'm going to err on the side of trusting God. Listen, he says he's fearless because he trusts in God. And point number one, if you want to follow along, the first lesson that we learn from this is we are fearless because we trust in God. We know that we are secure in him. And that's where we want to remain. That's what a fearless church looks like. A fearless church trusts in God. A fearless people trust in God. We go on in verse three. It says, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and the deadly pestilence. This word snare, is like, it's a trap. And the snare of the fowler, it's a picture of a bird that has to come low to get food. And in times like this, in crisis like this, it's easy for us to get low. And when we are low, we are susceptible to danger. We're susceptible to, to traps. And the enemy wouldn't want to do anything more than to trap us when we are at our lowest point, when we are most fearful, when we are most uh, worried about what's taking place all around us. He says, for he will deliver me from the snare. He'll deliver me from this trap, the, the trap of fear the trap of anxiety, the trap of doubt and worry and anger and even the trap of judgment. This is not a time uh, to, to judge people. It's easy to look and see decisions that are made, whether it's, it's the government, whether it's family members, whether it's churches. He's like, listen, uh, I will not be caught up in the trap of judgment. God will deliver me from that trap, he says, and from the deadly pestilence this pestilence this is a sickness it's talking about a plague he says listen god can deliver me from even the deadly pestilence you know it's it's interesting when we are in in a situation when uh, there's fear all around us uh, and, and we begin to get low and begin to get sad i think this text right here reminds us that in order to get over this hump in order to get over this fear we've got to be close to God we can't get trapped into uh, into uh, thinking that brings us low and here's the reality what happens when we do what happens if we get caught in the trap what happens if the pestilence touches us personally we've got to trust in God's love more than in our pain we got to trust in God's love more than in our situation because God's ultimate desire is to deliver his people. It says, for he will deliver you from the snare of the follow and from the deadly pestilence. His desire, his love for his people is to deliver them. God's ultimate goal for you and I is to be delivered. And we praise God because not so long ago, a few thousand years ago, Jesus came to be a deliverer for us, to deliver us from shame, from ridicule, from ultimate punishment. Because we are in Jesus, there is no condemnation. There's no trap laid for us. We are delivered by faith in him. And that's why we are fearless. We are fearless because God is our deliverer. And a fearless church 
needs to help everybody around us uh, turn to the deliverer and he is God and it is his son Jesus Christ in verse 4 he goes on and he says he will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge here's the deal if you choose to dwell with God he will cover you you can't cover something that wants to be uncovered. I know my son, JJ, um, Jeremiah, this boy sleeps wild. And when you go to cover him at night, by the time the morning comes, he is uncovered. He's kicked off the covers over him. That boy does not want to be covered. And it's saying, listen, if we dwell in the shelter of the Most High, he will cover us if we choose to remain dwelling in the shelter of God. If we choose to dwell in God's word, if we choose to remain in close proximity to God, he will cover us. And this word pinions talks about like a, a, a bird's feathers all the way to the very end when a bird extends itself, uh, when it extends its wings, it's all the way to the end. It says God will cover you all the way to the ends of where we need to be covered. God knows exactly what we need. God knows uh, how far he needs to go, how far he needs to reach to make sure that his people are covered and taken care of. And you can just think of a majestic bird with its wings outspread covering its young. I, I think of my dad when we were younger, when he would be sitting on the couch and watching TV, watching news or watching something, I would go and sit under his arm and he would cover me and it was a place of protection. It was a place of peace. I didn't run there because I was fearful. I ran there because I knew that my dad was fearless. My dad was a protector. My, my dad was loving and he cared for me. And so I would position myself literally under my father's wings, under my father's arms. I'm remembered of a hymn that we used to sing growing up, Under His Wings, I'm Safely Abiding. And that's what this text is saying. It says, he will cover you with his uh, pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge, you will find protection. He'll cover you from danger. From anything that wants to come against you, he will cover you. It says that uh, God's faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. And this shield and buckler, don't let the word buckler throw you off. It's just a small shield. Think Captain America, the little round shield that he held. And a lot of times we think about shields for protection and solely that. That it, it keeps something from harming us. But if you've watched Captain America, you see that Captain America's shield is also, a it's not only a defense mechanism, it's also an offense mechanism. It, it, it goes and, and protects, but it also comes after. And that's what God's faithfulness, God's faithfulness is not only a defense, but a destroyer of what disturbs you. And that's what God's faithfulness is. It's a shield and a buckler. It not only protects, but it'll go forward for you. It will trump anything that wants to come and harm you. And that's why we are fearless. We're fearless because God is faithful. God is not only a faithful defense, but he's a faithful offense. And in a times like this where everybody seems to be retreating, everybody seems to be afraid and scared, this is the time for God's church to rise up and be on the offense, to be there to help people and, and, and provide protection to those who need protection, to provide comfort to those who need comfort, to, to provide resources to those who, who, who are lacking in this season. We are fearless because God is is faithful. And so just to go over the three ways that we can be fearless, the three attributes of a fearless church. Number one, we are fearless because we trust in God. We are fearless because God is our deliverer. And we are fearless because God is faithful. And so this is when I call, this is my call to everybody watching this, everybody who is in this season of wondering what's next. Draw away from fear and draw near to God. Draw away from fear and draw near to God. And the only way to be fearless is to know the God who is faithful. If you want to be fearless, you've got to know God. And when you know God, you will discover that God 
is faithful. Yes, live informed, but also live in faith. I'm not saying don't go out and watch the news. I don't, I'm not saying go sit under a rock. What I'm saying is, yes, know what's going on, but know that God is still in control, that God overcomes everything that wants to overcome us. Because where there is panic, we've been called to bring peace. And really, that's the bottom line. This is not a time for blame. This is not a time for ridicule or judgment. This is not a time uh, to look at people on the other side or people across the seas and, and cast blame and cast doubt or judgment. This is a time to love and protect and point people to Jesus. We have the opportunity to point a fearful people to a faithful God because we are fearless. And so today, if you are in a situation where you are fearful about what the future holds, if you're fearful about how this affects your, your finances, if you're fearful about how this affects your health, if you're fearful how this affects your plan for a great 2020, this is what I want to say. Draw away from fear and draw near to God. Get to know the God who is faithful. And maybe you're watching this and you don't know God. You don't have a personal relationship with Jesus. You don't know what real peace looks like. Listen, Jesus is the peace giver. Jesus is the one who will turn your fear into faith. He's the one who's going to bring joy in your sorrow. And today, before this message is over, this video is over, I want to give you an opportunity to say, Jesus, I need that peace. Jesus, I need to be freed from fear. And the way you do that is you turn over your life to Jesus Christ. You put your life into his hands. You turn from following your own desires. You turn from following your own ways and you start following his way. You say, Lord, I, I, I was once doing my own thing and it really hasn't worked out. It's left me in fear. But right now, you can turn that fear into a relationship with Jesus Christ who will take away all of your fear, who's going to take away all of your pain and all of your doubt and all of your worry. And so today, if you want to choose to follow Jesus, I want to introduce you to the Messiah, the God of the ages, the, the, the personal savior who is interested in you. So if you would pray with me, I would love to uh, just join you in the greatest decision that you will ever make. Simply pray this prayer. Dear God, today I'm turning my fear into faith. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Jesus, thank you for taking away my fear, my anxiety, my worry, and my sins. Everything that I've done against you or done against other people, thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for not holding that against me. Today, I'm turning my life over to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hey, welcome home. Welcome to the family. If you prayed that prayer, you know that God is your protector. He's your guide. He wants to be close to you, wants to be with you. So this is what I'm going to tell you. At the bottom of this screen, like I said, there's a connection card. There's a digital connection card that you can fill out. Go ahead and fill it out. Let us know that you made a decision to follow Jesus. We want to send some information out to you. So hopefully you put all the rest of your information in there. Listen, we can be fearless. You can be fearless. And God is calling a fearless church to a faithful God. You guys have an amazing Sunday. And remember to remain fearless.